we can use this um, idea of the half-life to date artifacts that are found. So we're taking advantage of the presence of natural radioactivity. So this is called radiocarbon dating. Um, this uses the radioactive isotope carbon-14. So carbon-14 is constantly being formed in the upper atmosphere. Neutron bombardment of nitrogen is forming the carbon-14. So there's a relatively constant level of carbon-14 in the atmosphere. Carbon-14 decays back to nitrogen with a half-life of 5,730 years. So it's formed, and then it slowly decays. So the, the amount of atmospheric carbon-14 is nearly constant. It gets oxidized into carbon dioxide, and living organisms take the carbon dioxide in, and the carbon gets incorporated into your body. You've got radioactive carbon-14 in your body. Everybody does. Every living organism does. Is it hurting you? No. It's natural. Okay. It's okay. So the plants take in the CO2, and we eat the plants, and so everything that's living has a relatively constant amount of carbon-14. It's decaying, and you're eliminating it, but you're also constantly taking more in. When an organism dies, it stops getting any more new carbon-14. Whatever carbon-14 was present in the organism when it died is all there will be, and that's going to slowly decay. And so we can measure how much carbon-14 is left and estimate when it died. It's not super, super precise, but in something that is, you know, thousands of years old, we can get a pretty good idea. The maximum age you can estimate is about 50,000 years, and the reason is that after 50,000 years, the level of carbon-14 that's present is really just too small to detect accurately, because after that many half-lives, there's just not enough left. So. We check the accuracy against objects where we can tell how old it is by other methods. So I just went on a field trip um, about a month ago with my, with my son up to Grant Grove, and we looked at the, the giant redwood trees, right? How can you tell how old a tree is? The rings, right? Now, you don't say, oh, I wonder how, this, oh, how old this one is. I'll chop it down and find out. <laughs> They can actually just bore into um, and pull a sample out of a living tree without causing much, you know, really harming the tree, and then you count the ring rings. So you can count the rings on a living tree, and then you can find out um, uh, how old things are. Um, so if the tree was dead, you could measure the carbon-14 in it, and count the rings and compare that way. We do observe deviations up to 5% due to variations in atmospheric concentrations of carbon-14 over time. It's not like a, a hard and fast constant, but it doesn't vary much. It doesn't vary very much. So if something is alive, and, and here when we talk about age, we're talking about age when it died. So if it just died, the concentration of carbon-14 relative to living organisms is the same, 100%. After one half-life of carbon-14, the concentration of carbon-14 in that dead thing is 50% of what's in a living organism. After two half-lives, it's 25%. So each half-life, each 5,730 years, the percentage gets cut in half. You get the idea? It's kind of cool. So let's, let's look at a problem like this. An ancient scroll is claimed to have originated from Greek scholars in about 500 BC. A measure of its carbon-14 content reveals it contains 100% of that found in living organisms. 
is the scroll authentic? We actually don't have to do any calculations here. The answer is just no. If the scroll was written on 500 years ago, scrolls are made out of either paper or papyrus or some plant tissue that was alive. If they were writing on it 500 years ago, not 500 years ago, 500 BC, that would make it around 2,500 years old. The carbon-14 content of that would have to be much, much less than 100%. So the answer there is no. Any questions? Yeah. So if you had a question, you know, well, the, the carbon-14 content is 50% that of living organisms, how old would it be? Well, it's, that's one half-life. It, it got cut in half. That's one half-life. You'd need to know the half-life of, of carbon-14, but I don't expect you to remember that. Um, but the half-life is 5,730 years. So if it's 50%, then it's about 5,730 years old. So we're not going to do anything real precise with these calculations. We just want you to have the big idea of how it works. <clears throat>